Sandra was a fresh computer science graduate and had just started her job hunt. She wanted to take her time to find the right job, but still had bills to pay, so she started working as a cashier at a local restaurant known for its delicious fusion menu and authentic Taiwanese boba. As she settled into her role, she couldn't help but to notice several inefficiencies. Customers would often stare at the huge menu, looking overwhelmed, kitchen staff would struggle to keep up with obscure orders during lunch, and they would often run out of certain ingredients, leading to disappointed customers. She decided to use her downtime and computer science skills to dive deeper into the restaurant's operations. Maybe I can make a project out of this or something, she thought to herself. One evening, Sandra asked her boss, Abed, for access to sales records for the past year. He agreed and handed over the data. She imported the data into her laptop and wrote a script to analyze profit sources and ordering patterns. To her surprise, she discovered that 80% of revenue came from only 20% of the menu items. Certain dishes, while rarely ordered, had high preparation times and low profit margins, and peak ordering times often bottlenecked the kitchen due to complicated dish combinations. Wow, there's like... A lot of room for improvement here, she thought to herself. Let me draft something up for the boss. My name is Josh Matikor. I have three degrees in IT, cybersecurity, and computer science from WGU. I've also worked a whole bunch of different general IT jobs, cybersecurity jobs, as well as jobs in development, and I currently run my own ed tech company with a bunch of employees. In contrary to the current public panic and public belief, computer science is not dead by any stretch of the imagination. And by the way, I'm doing a $500 giveaway in this video, so just check the description for details on how to enter. It's completely legit, very simple, and you can see a list of past winners in the description as well. So the way people think about computer science degrees, I don't think it's really correct. Um, I blame this mostly on social media and like big inflated salaries going around, but the way people think about computer science is like, I'm gonna get my CS degree and then go work in big tech and work at Google or something. That's the only thing I can do. And then, oh my God, like everyone's applying to the same big Big tech jobs and I, I can't get a job my computer science degree is useless but that's not like what the computer science degree is for that's one thing you can do but at its core computer science is just using technology to solve real world problems often that involves some kind of like coding and manipulation of data but it's just basically solving problems using computers and technology at its core and I still think as long as you can stomach the math the computer science degree is the best possible degree that you can get for anything tech related I say this because when you go through computer science, you get like a super strong foundation and whatever you build on that foundation is going to be really, really strong. Like computer science and software engineering, because they're not the same thing, or computer science in IT, or computer science in cybersecurity, or computer science, and you go to be like a business analyst or something like this. It's just gonna make your problem solving skills that much better and give you a good understanding of how computers work at a really low level. And I think it's really hard to beat the CS degree in general. So when comparing the computer science and IT degrees, the best analogy that I can think of is pretend you're an architect and you have a budget of $10 million to build a commercial building. Getting a computer science degree would be the equivalent of blowing the full $10 million on the building's foundation. And luckily for us, WGU, which is the school I got my comp sci degree from, recently revamped their whole computer science curriculum and included a whole bunch of AI-centric courses, which I think was really smart, actually. And because WGU is competency-based and because of their tuition model, it's possible to complete this degree faster than normal and for well under $10,000. Not only did I complete my comp sci degree for well under $10,000, I think I have the speed record for that as well. I'm not sure if anyone's completed a comp sci degree faster than I have. And I'll kind of talk about the strategies I used for that in just a minute. And since getting that degree, I've been able to successfully interview at Microsoft, Amazon, Tenable, as well as Google. And I'm not telling you like, oh, you should go work at those companies or something. All I'm saying is like, obviously the degree is good enough for them to interview me and have me pass interviews. Of course, it takes more than just a degree to get interviewed and to pass an interview, right? I'm just saying that the degree didn't filter me out for those companies, if that makes sense. So just as a quick overview, in this video, I'm gonna quickly go over the changes to WG's new computer science degree program that I talked about. I'm gonna show you a spreadsheet and talk about how I use study.com as well as some other strategies to complete my computer science degree extremely quickly and for as cheap as possible. I actually completed mine under $4,500 in under three months, but this is not really reasonable for a normal person and I was really intentional about what I did. But the strategy I'm talking about, you can definitely do it in under under $10,000 in around a year's time. So we'll talk about that. We're gonna finish Sandra's restaurant story. And then finally, I'm gonna share some uh, big brain advice and tips on ways you can make use of your computer science degree uh, in the current economy that are not necessarily Fang Sui tech bro related. So stick around for that. 
So getting into WG's new computer science program, um, if you didn't know, WG is an online accredited college and it's self-paced, meaning that you pay for one term at a time. I believe it's around $4,000 and you're allowed to complete as many courses in that time period as you can, which is one of the key things that allows you to finish so quickly. So what you're looking at here is a side-by-side -side comparison of WG's computer science program prior to being revamped versus the new implementation. The stuff in red is basically stuff that's been removed. Green is the stuff that's been added or changed and the stuff that's white and black on both sides simply exists in both programs and hasn't been changed. So it looks like advanced data management was replaced with advanced AI and ML. Looks like they added an artificial intelligence optimization for computer scientists course. Uh, looks like the capstone was actually changed to incorporate some kind of team development project, which is really useful because that's pretty much like all you do in the real world. Well, I shouldn't say all you do, but it's like really ubiquitous doing team development. So that's cool that they added that. Uh, Global Arts and Humanities was removed, it looks like, and then Introduction to AI. Looks like that course was just revamped and renamed. It probably contains similar content, but more relevant to the recent advances in AI. Looks like Introduction to IT was replaced with Intro to Computer Science, and Introduction to Physical and Human Geography was changed or replaced with Systems Thinking and Applications. IT Leadership Foundations was removed, it looks like. And then OS Operating Systems for Programmers, looks like that was just simply renamed and revamped. Um, this is like a lot of memory management and how like the actual hardware works with the OS, if I remember correctly. And it looks like they added a class, Practical Applications of Prompt. This is a prompt engineering class. Um, if you don't know what that is, that's just like the way you give instructions to LLMs, for example, like ChatGPT to formulate or to get it to output things in a certain way, which is really, really important for productivity, at least. I'm sure there's a lot of other applications to it, but um, it looks like this class like really teaches you how to use ChatGPT well. And then it looks like tech technical communications was removed. And if I remember correctly, there's like one less class in the new program. So that's pretty cool. It looks like some pretty good changes. A lot of AI centric stuff has been added, which I think is really good. So getting into how to complete this degree so quickly and for under $10,000, not only does WGU have a self-paced thing where you can complete as many classes as you can in a six month time period, they also allow you to transfer in up to three quarters or 75% of the degree from external sources. What this means is you can use study.com, which is an educational organization that offers ACE accredited classes for extremely cheap. And you can take a lot of classes from there, complete them, and then transfer them into WGU prior to starting your degree and knock off like like around half of the classes for incredibly cheap. Not only are the study.com classes really inexpensive, it's possible to complete them much faster than a traditional college class. What you're looking at here is a spreadsheet with all the courses required for the WGU computer science degree, along with the allowed transfers from study.com. And basically how this works is you'd sign up for study.com using the 30% discount link, take all the applicable courses, transfer them into WGU. And at this point, the remaining courses will look like this. Then you finish the rest of the degree program. If you take two courses a month from study.com, with the discount, it's about $164.50 for the first three months with the discount. If you take four classes per month, it's about $304. That's like an extra $70 per class for the first three months. And this is about $1,600 for all 14 classes. At this point, you'll have 20 classes left to complete at WGU. And then to further minimize the time it takes to complete the degree once you enroll, I included these links to Reddit posts that talk about different strategies people use for studying and passing each class quickly. The number that you're looking at here is basically the number of days that this particular particular person took to pass, just so you know what's possible. Everyone's going to be different because people have different backgrounds and stuff, but this is just the strategy the person used as well as how long it took them to pass that particular class. If you pre-study and learn the most difficult material before registering, like you get a decent coding foundation, you go over data structures and algorithms, it's completely possible with these strategies to finish the rest of the degree in under a year's time. It's certainly not easy, but if you can manage to do it, you'll have yourself a computer science degree in around a year for under $10,000. And this is exactly what I did. Um, the reason why mine was so fast is because I, I transferred in like another bachelor's degree as well as study.com courses as, as well as like uh, a few certifications. I think I had like Project Plus and that removed another class. And I only had like 10 or 11 classes once I actually started the computer science degree. And then by the time I finished, I think it took me like 10 weeks or something. That's why I say what I did is not really Really normal and I don't recommend trying to shoot for it but I was like intentionally trying to go fast like a normal person if you go through study.com and you're like diligent about pre-studying and then following the strategies and just like dumping a lot of energy into it it is definitely possible to do in a year now back to the story with Sandra after discovering all the inefficiencies Sandra used the data she had analyzed to generate a few charts 
some pie charts to highlight the most popular items, and bar graphs to show profit margins by dish. Armed with these insights, she created a streamlined proposal. Number one, simplify the menu. Focus on the top 20% of items and basically cut everything else out. Number two, optimize prep stations. Group dishes with similar prep steps to reduce kitchen chaos. And number three, introduce data-driven specials. Highlight dishes with high profit margins during peak hours. When Sandra presented her findings to Abed, he was skeptical but curious. The data made sense and he decided to test the recommendations. Over the next month, the restaurant rolled out a smaller, cleaner menu. Sandra wrote a simple app for the staff to track inventory in real time, preventing overstock of rarely used ingredients and preventing them from running out. She also developed a feature for suggesting smart combos based on popular pairings, which subtly nudged customers toward high margin items. As a result, the impact was immediate. Wait times decreased, staff stress was eased, and customers appreciated the streamlined choices and new menu. And revenue was increased by 40% within the first three months. Her boss was ecstatic, and after some negotiation, Sandra was promoted to a business analyst role and her salary was increased with a quarterly bonus based on company earnings. This may sound kind of like a contrived scenario, but it really isn't. There's a lot of business inefficiency all over the place. And the smaller the org is, like the more likely it's going to be there. And it doesn't have to be like a restaurant. It can be like literally anything. Like in my early career days, I was working help desk somewhere and there was some process where it required people to like print out a paper and like do something with some physical paper and move it around. And I was like, this ain't make sense. So I like wrote a program to like do everything and handle everything electronically. There's always something that you can do and at the very least you'll get a project out of it but it could turn into a job later right or at least some kind of promotion or more money or or something like this so it's really good to think about computer science in the sense of just like normal business and normal real world problems and then solving them with technology it's completely possible and i would even recommend like trying to get a non-software engineering job even though you have a computer science degree it's not going to waste your degree goes to waste when you don't use the stuff that you learned in the degree and computer science degree contrary to what everyone seems to think is not simply for coding only it's for solving problems like solving real world problems leveraging technology it just so happens to be that you can solve a lot of problems with code because code is essentially just like manipulating and moving data around and it makes it easy to solve like numbers problems but dedicated software engineering jobs that's not the only thing you can do with your computer science degree like sure you can get a job at like a restaurant or something like this or some random you know reception job or something but you don't have to do that you can actually get a like a legit business analyst job which spoiler alert that's what sandra stumbled into like in our not like the real sandra but the sandra in our example story she worked at a restaurant and she noticed some business inefficiency and she solved it using her problem solving skills with computer science and she became a business analyst that's what business analysts do they like look at the business and use technology to like solve problems and then uh, help uh, resolve those inefficiencies so that's another thing that you could do it's really cringe for me to see all these kids like flooding all these fang software engineering jobs uh, like that's the only thing that exists right like spoiler alert not only is this, is this going to waste your time but you're likely going to get abused pretty badly by these jobs that's just like human nature and economics and that's because they know like everyone is like flooding to there and they have like you know a thousand applicants per job or that's probably like on the low end right it's like thousands of applicants per job posting so they can like take their time and like put you through the ringer not only when you're trying to apply to them but when you actually start working they can pretty much make you do like whatever they feel like doing and this happens to like uh jobs that require visas as well because it's like really hard to get that job so the employer typically will just abuse the heck out of them because then they know the person can't quit because there's like you know tons of other people lining up to take your place it's just not a good scenario so i just want people to start thinking out of the box when it comes to their computer science degrees like you don't need to be working in big tech as a software engineer to be considered successful regardless of what your closed-minded parents might think you can have like a normal job doesn't need to be software engineering it could be like a business analyst or like logistics or literally anything and then you can leverage your problem solving ability and code and whatever you want to from your computer science degree to do that job better and you can still have a successful career and spoiler alert again you can couple whatever your career is with content creation and build a business around that and then make way more money than a big tech engineer anyways and still have like a de decent life right um it's just kind of up to you just it's really important to think outside of the box and think in and think in terms of solving problems with technology versus like being like a big tech fang suite right 
Don't forget the course mapping and steady.com discount links in the description. It's a super low pressure, easy, inexpensive way to get started. And I do have steady.com course mappings for all the programs at WGU, like cybersecurity, IT, and even business, not just computer science. So definitely check those out. I'm happy that I got mine because I can really leverage GPT and just do a good job in general with whatever I'm doing. It seriously gives you an edge on everything that you do in life. Again, the math is troublesome, but if you can get past that, um, it will be you'll be better off for it.